Hey Maker, Emily here, otherwise known as That Mom with a Laser and the brand ambassador for Eon Laser USA. And today I am working on making name puzzles for my little girl's classmates. Now, I do want to say this before we even get started. I am not selling uh, puzzles for children. And if you are somebody that wants to sell products for children, I would highly, highly recommend that you join my Facebook group here if you haven't already and watch the training done by US safety and compliance expert, Misty Henry right here. This is a great training that she did for us where she really helps us open our eyes and understand what goes into selling a product for children. These puzzles that I'm making, again, it's just a gift for children that are almost five years old, so they're on the older older side for products like this, so it's okay, it's just a gift, I'm not worried about it. With that said, let's go ahead and make some puzzles. Okay guys, so I am kind of going over the top here. This is, you know, for a bunch of little kids that I know. So I am actually, I'm also trying to use um, scrap acrylic that I've had for a long time and just get rid of it. So some of you might think the way that I chose to do this might be a little wasteful, but it's also really cute. So I am using two different colors of ac acrylic. Okay, so you see I have a bottom layer and a top layer and I have stacked the letters on top of each other. Now, I did this intentionally because I want the child to be able to pick up the letter out of the puzzle. I could, to save material, do it like this. I haven't taken the masking off of this one yet, but you know, then it would just be one layer, but then you'd wanna create like a finger hole. If you saw my rainbow sticky note holder, you see how I have a little finger hole here? It makes picking things up easier. You'd wanna do that around the letters so that you can pick up the letters. Otherwise, you can see it's like, you know, it's not practical, it's not gonna work, okay? So we're taking two colors of acrylic, just like you see here, all right? The bottom one will not have any 3M double-sided adhesive. The top layer will, okay? So I'm gonna remove this, I'll stick it on here. Whoops! Then I will take the letters and I'll do the same thing. So you can see here, this does not have any 3M double-sided adhesive, and this does, and then I will attach the letters like that. And then that's it, we'll have our puzzle. All right, so I have gone ahead and I've taken the liberty of already writing out all the names for these puzzles that I wanna make. And for those of you who are curious, I'm using the font called Bumble. I think it's very cute, very trendy, and very retro, which is very in right now. And now I have to go ahead and make, you know, the square, I'm sorry, the rectangle that's going to go around my names. And there's one more thing I need to do. I need to connect any of the dots to the eyes to the bottom of my eyes because um, I just don't want to have tiny loose pieces like that. And I think it'll just be easier to have it as one connected piece. So I've decided I'm going to make the majority of these about 13 and a half. I think that works well. <clears throat> by three inches high, okay? And I think that works well for names that are long, like this one, Adelaide, okay? So I've grabbed both <clears throat> my rectangle and my name, and then I'm gonna use this um, bullseye icon right here just to make sure that the name is perfectly centered. And let's see what else I wanna do here. <clears throat> I do want to connect the eye here and I also want to round the corners here of my um, my rectangle. I, I think those are kind of sharp and so I'd like to smoothen them out. So I'm going to go up here to window, look for shape properties, which is going to pop up over here. And then I am going to change the corner radius. So see how I did that? Oh, I actually like that. I can make that smaller if I don't like that. So for example, let's try 0.5. Um, but I actually like the big curve here. I think that looks really cute with this type of font. So I'm gonna stick to that. Now, uh, I want to disconnect my, the dot from my eye so that I can attach it to the bottom. Here's the thing though, right now, Lightburn is reading this as a font. It's not reading it as a shape. So if I try to disconnect this or ungroup it, I can't. What I have to do is convert the font to path. I have to convert it to path, which means 
the software will go from reading it as a font to reading it as just a shape, okay? So I'm gonna come over here to edit, scroll down to convert to path, and done. Now you can see up here, I can ungroup every little piece. So I'm gonna ungroup it, click off, and now I can, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I did it backwards. <laughs> okay, so now you can see that it is, no. Let's go back, okay. So now you can see, <clears throat> so now you can see here, if I wanted to group this all together, I could, but I don't, I wanna leave these as individual pieces. So I'm gonna click off. And now see, I can grab just the dot to my eye, which is what I wanted. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it down just a hair. And then I'm gonna grab the bottom of my eye and I'm gonna weld them together. Boop, there we go. So now I have one complete eye and I don't have to bother with that anymore. Then I'm going to duplicate. I like to right click if you know the hotkey, I think it's, let's see, let's test it. Option D. No. <laughs> See, I'm not. Control D. No. Command D. Oh, there it is. Command D on a Mac. Okay. And you can duplicate um, anything you want. So there we go. Now I've got to do this for all of my um, pieces. So I'm just going to go ahead. Let's do this again, Command D, look at that. And set this up right here. Now, if I wanted to make it even easier, Actually, I will just so I can teach you something else here. I'm gonna grab all of my names, move them over to the side, get them out of the way for the moment. Start down here and go to my array feature, which was right over there. And I'm going to make, whoops, as many as I can fit. That'll work for now. I think they're all gonna be the same size, but I'm not positive. I might change the size as I get to work with the name. Aaron seems to fit in 13.5 pretty, pretty, pretty well. Uh, Julia's pretty tight there. I think I actually wanna make hers a little smaller. See, so I might make this puzzle smaller, you know? I don't know how people who sell them all the same size, I don't know, I don't like having so much extra on the side. I might, I might do that. <laughs> I might decide later, but for right now, I'm gonna keep it that way. Harper needs to be a little smaller. See, what I'm looking for is I don't wanna have, I don't want this name to be so big that a letter like my P is gonna to be touching this small because that could potentially break over time. So I wanna make sure that there's plenty of space from the top to the bottom of each um, of each name. So let me grab that, bullseye that, do the same here. I realize they're overlapping, just ignore that, I will fix that later. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I've got all of my names pretty much set up. Daisy is tripping me out here though, because you see how this Y, that just, I don't know how to make it work. So I'm gonna have to mess with that one a little bit. I am gonna make that smaller. I think I wanna make Dukes a little smaller too. And another thing with the name Duke here, you're gonna see this is really thin. So I'm gonna edit convert to path because I want to grab this little piece and I kind of want to move it so that this is thicker and less likely to break. I might even make it a little smaller. There we go. Okay, now Savannah's really long here. Um, I don't want to make it too much smaller. Hopefully that'll work. And then Daisy, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert to path. I'm going to group these all together and bring them down, maybe. Yeah, that looks kind of wacky. I don't know what to do with Daisy. 
what would you do? I think what I'm going to end up doing is getting rid of the name Daisy. Let's try it this way. And I might just do it all capital letters. Ooh, that works. I personally, I prefer lowercase letters because this is how the child is going to learn how to write their name. We never, we rarely write our name in all caps, you know, so I'm going to stick with the lowercase for everybody else, but because it looked a little wonky there, it's not a big deal. And I think she'll still love it. So that's, that's how I'm going to approach that one. Yep. I think I'm going to leave it like that. If there's another option, let me know. <laughs> but by the time you do, I will have already completed this, but I will use that philosophy next time. So also what I'm going to do, so I don't have to convert to Path and convert to Compat, bleh, convert to Path and Connect. I'm just going to duplicate this one. And then, oh, I have to convert to Path anyway, bleh, if I want to delete it. Or I can, hmm, I'm just going to go like that and then use this one. It kind of looks like a little queen. No, a little pawn from a, a chess game. <laughs> okay. Duplicate it, bring it down here. Good. I'm happy with that. All right. So now I have to create the other side. I'm going to make sure I like all of these sizes. This one is about 10. Let me just make it an even 10. Lock that. I'll make this one 10 so that those are all the same. And then this one as well. Unlock that. Okay. Now I need to duplicate all of these. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to grab all of these, duplicate it, bring it over. See, cause these are going to be the backer of the puzzle. This will go on top and then the pieces will go <clears throat> inside. All right, I'm gonna take some time, set this up, and then we'll run them on the laser. Okay, so now what I've done is I have taken all of the ones that were the same size that were 13 and a half and I have snapped them together intentionally because I would like the laser to just run one cut here instead of two, which is going to save me time when I'm producing it. Okay, so I've done the bullseye thing and then what I've done is I zoom in <clears throat> I grab the bottom and I let it snap into place with the line below it. See how it does that? Snaps in place. If it doesn't do that, if your laser, um, if your um, light burn is not doing that, you can come over here to your settings and um, snap to objects. Make sure you have that selected. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, actually I'm going to get rid of all these because there's a better way to do it. I'm going to grab all of these. And I'm going to make sure that they are perfectly aligned vertically. Okay. There we go. Then I'm going to come over here to my optimization settings and I'm going to choose remove overlapping lines. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell Lightburn anywhere that there is a line that is potentially overlapping. I don't want you to cut twice. I just want you to cut the overlapping line once. Okay. 
And you can even tell it if it's within a distance to still cut it as one line, okay? And it will do that, which is really nice. So if I come here to my <clears throat> preview, I can see it's going to take about 27 minutes to cut this. But look at the laser here. See, it's cutting that line once and then it's cutting over again, which I don't want. So let's try optimization settings, remove overlapping lines, and see if it saved us any time. I knocked off three minutes here because now it's not double cutting. See that? It's going to run once, and then it's only going to run that outer layer, outer layer. So that's just one little tip there to save time if you don't know about it already. Okay, now I'm going to finish up the rest of my names and get to cutting. Okay, so this is gonna get a little confusing, but it's only because I'm trying to use up scraps and not use the acrylic that I use every day for my business. I'm just trying to make these as a gift with acrylic that is just sitting there taking up space, okay? I wanna make them two colors, okay? So it gets a little confusing, but bear with me. The first thing I did was I took this teal color, which is really pretty, but it has, um, it has 3M all over it. So that's gonna be kind of tricky because I do need parts of the puzzle not to have 3M. So the first thing I did is I cut out what's gonna be the top layer of my puzzle out of the 3M, okay? And I also have this pink acrylic that has some 3M on it and some not, which works for me. What did I do? <laughs> well, I cut the top out of my teal and I cut the bottom out of my pink that didn't have any 3M. So that leaves me with, this is my bottom layer, this is my top layer, okay? Right there. Now, inevitably, when this cut out, I needed to cut out the letters so that, obviously, I have space to put letters in. But this has 3M on the back. I can't make this a puzzle piece for the child, obviously, because once they put it in there, it's gonna stick. So this is just gonna be extra and I'm gonna gift it to them in a baggie. So if the family wants to, I don't know, put their name on like a bin or something, they're gonna have an extra little name to do that with. All right. <laughs> so it is semi-wasteful, but I think the families will appreciate having an extra little name cut. So then what I did is I cut the same name, but I cut it with, the, with the, um, the 3M on the correct side of the name, and this is why, so that I don't have to remove the 3M, which would be a pain in the butt. I cut out out of my pink acrylic, oops, sorry. Out of my pink acrylic, I cut the name out where I did have 3M. Because this is gonna go, watch this, I think it's kind of clever. This is going to be the pink name on top, and the G, I'm going to stick them together like this, so this doesn't have 3M. We'll stick in like that, and then this one will stick on top, and then I'll have two different colors. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, it will once I assemble it. So let's go ahead and put this baby together. All right, guys, let's see how this goes. My son is with me today, so if you hear a kid in the background, I apologize in advance. Um, okay, so here's my bottom layer, my top layer. Here I have the bottom layer of the name and the top layer of the name. And then here were my extra pieces 
that I am ever so kindly going to gift them and set aside into a little baggie. Okay, there we go. Maybe I should peel, maybe I should peel that off for them. Okay, I'll do that later though. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my Gorilla Tape and remove the masking. I do not like this masking tape at all. It is, oh, that's all right. Some of them have been really difficult to work with and remove. That one's being agreeable. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to lay it flat because that'll help me make sure that I have, you know, a flat surface on one end. And with my fingers, I'm gently going to guide it all the way to the top to make sure that everything is nice and flush. Okay, that worked well. Oh, that's so pretty. I love it. Okay, check it out. So now, hmm, I'll take off the masking tape once I'm done so I don't get my fingerprints all over everything. I'll do this one first. Actually, I'll set these up. Let me set this aside. Okay, so now I have the two sticky sides are gonna stick together. And I really only did that because I didn't feel like removing the masking tape. I was being kind of lazy. Oh gosh, I didn't get that right. Ah! Oh man. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take the two uh, sticky parts and do my best to line them up and feel with my fingers all the way around. Yay! To get it stuck together. And I, I really hope that that holds up. Awesome. Okay, now that that's done, I can go ahead and remove the masking tape. Just like that, I'll do it on both sides. And I can go ahead and place it into the puzzle.
Okay, so a lot of this acrylic that I'm using, I actually, <laughs> I lucked out on, and this was somebody who was de-stashing, so a lot of it, I don't even know where it's from. One of the downsides of wherever this came from is that the paper masking is a pain in the butt to remove. I mean, I've never had such a hard time with masking tape. Thankfully though, someone in my, my Facebook group, if you're not in my Facebook group, please head on over there, it's amazing, recommended this stuff right here. Um, Craftix Mask Off. So I'm gonna give it a shot and see how well this works because this masking has been really a pain to remove. So let's see, it just says remove the paper masking. To, to remove it, dampen a soft cloth, uh, wipe the sheet, allow it several minutes, time will vary, and then peel away. So let's see how well it works. It smells yucky. I probably should have used, uh, it's kind of greasy. It almost smells like, I don't know, like, like you're at a, <laughs> a mechanics shop or something. So I, maybe I should have used gloves. So, ugh, <clears throat> do not like the smell at all. Okay, so I'm gonna let it sit and hopefully this, makes life a lot easier for removing masking tape on this particular acrylic. Now my fingers are gonna be super greasy. Well, that does. Okay, so it's been sitting on here for about 10 minutes and we're gonna go ahead and see if peeling it off works at all. And you know what, Sarah? You were right. So I can see a little bit of the grease. It seeped through on the side that has 3M. So I don't know if that's gonna affect the 3M adhesive at all. So let's see if it peels. <gasps> oh my gosh! <laughs> That's amazing. Let me show you why it's amazing. Can you, do you want to show them one of the other ones that we weren't able to remove it from? Oh my goodness, game changer. Oh. This is amazing. Okay, we have to find whoever um, recommended this stuff. Go ahead, you want to try, oh my gosh. try it? Yes. This Please. makes life <laughs> so much easier.
All right, so let's go ahead and recap. Um, a couple of things. I definitely really like that masking remover. I would highly recommend it if you have masking tape that's been a pain to remove. Um, that was one great takeaway from this experiment today. Also, you're gonna notice that this one right here, this is shiny, right? Whereas this one is not. That's because this, um, this uh, puzzle is made with gloss acrylic and this one is made with double-sided acrylic that has matte on one side and shine on the other. So my personal preference is to use the matte and that's because over time, kids are gonna scratch it. I'm sure scratches are gonna start to show on this over time, whereas here it would be less noticeable. Um, but again, I was just working with scrap that I wanted to get rid of, so, and it's free, so this is, you know, I just worked with what I had, and I think they turned out really cute. I can't wait to gift them to these little kiddos. And with that, guys, please subscribe, hit that bell button, help a girl out. I really wanna grow the channel. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys here soon over at That Mom with a Laser. Bye, guys.